Now, it's one of Europe's most important Greek revival buildings. Now proposals to turn Edinburgh's old Royal High School into a luxury hotel have been unanimously thrown out by councillors. The A-listed building on Carlton Hill has been unused for decades and is on the at-risk register due to the state of disrepair. Our reporter Lisa Summers talked to Councillor Lewis Ritchie, the planning convener for Edinburgh Council. She began by asking him what it was about the design that councillors didn't like. I think the key thing to say is it was a very balanced proposal that we had. I think there were some positives to the development. You mentioned the fact that that site has lay untouched for a long time. And I think there's an obvious pressure for councillors to try and deliver economic uh, development for the city. However, across the whole, we have to look at what the application actually was. I think that the design, the scale, the massing of what was being proposed was just incongruous to what sits there already. I think there's a lot of public affection for that wonderful Thomas Hamilton building, and I think there was a responsibility for councillors to protect that architectural heritage, to protect that wonderful asset for the city, and to reject this application as we've done. Well, the developers would argue that part of their design was to respect the kind of ideas that Thomas Hamilton had when he originally created the building and the idea that this was about progress and development. Mm. Um, but you didn't take that attitude, you didn't take that on board? No, I mean, obviously we heard what they had to say. Um, I think it was a difficult brief for the architect because they had to try and come up with a proposal that was economically viable in what is quite a constructed site, a constructive site. They took one view of doing that. They, they had a proposal um, in terms of the wings and so on. But unfortunately, the, the design was just not up to that world-class standard that I think everybody in Edinburgh and around the world expects for such a unique site. I mean, it is a separate move and a separate proposal, but previously the council's approved plans for the development of a music school on the site. Uh, what is the kind of latest in terms of that process? Because presumably at the moment you're in a contractual arrangement with um, the, uh, the, the hotel developers. So I'm the convener of planning. My uh, responsibilities lie purely in planning. So I haven't had any concern about the, the contractual arrangement that may or may not exist between the developer, the applicant and the, the, the council. Uh, what I will say is that there is an application, the music school, which has full planning permission. Um, so they have that green light, uh, that essential green light from planning and uh, it just waits to see what happens next. Uh, there is also an argument to be said that it is only really developers, like private commercial developers, that have the money to be able to um, do the repairs, to carry out the, the much needed repairs that need done to that building. Uh, if you don't allow a commercial business to take over the site, then we could see it fall into disrepair and actually we, we may lose it forever. So how do you kind of reconcile those two things? I don't think it's necessarily true that it's only big private business that can take uh, some ownership and stewardship of our architectural assets. Just last week there we had an application for Lawrence Place, a very, very important uh, building, the old infirmary, that was bought by the university. We've got a fantastic proposal there to make it in a really unique learning environment with fantastic public space. So that's one example, there are many others, of how other types of enterprise could come in and actually do a great job in protecting our architectural heritage. And I hope that continues. So what will happen now? I mean, obviously, the decision's been made. Can the developers come back to you with more proposals in the future? Absolutely. We're quite happy to take any other proposals that come forward. Uh, the applicant's got a decision to make now. What do they do? They've had a refusal today. They had a refusal two years ago. I understand that an appeal has um, been lodged in respect to one of them, and it is now up to the developer to decide what to do next. That's Councillor Lewis Ritchie speaking there to Lisa Summers. Now, 